Welcome to the Simply Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Calandra. On today's episode, I want to talk about several cybersecurity basic safeguards. This is an interesting topic because this is an area that I am not an expert on. I really am not. Here at Elliott Wealth Management Services, we have a team member who takes the lead on this topic. We also, because we deal with so much private, confidential, and sensitive information. We have an outside uh, technology firm that helps us. Also, there are lots of industry safeguards that uh, we adhere to so that we stay ahead when it comes to cybersecurity. And just to kind of set the stage uh, for all my listeners, Cybersecurity is the practice of protecting your information from unauthorized access uh, that could be for criminal use on the internet. So think of things like computer viruses, ransomware. Think about pop-ups that can crash your computer. Also think about having your sensitive information stolen. It seems clear to me that in today's technologically driven world, I don't think you could avoid risks completely. I think that's pretty much impossible unless you're going to live off the grid, which also seems sort of impossible. But I do think that there are ways that you could reduce your risks and these are reasonable precautions you could take. It's not going to cost you much money, much time, and not too much inconvenience. You probably do know a little bit about this subject uh, to begin with. For example, you want to use unique usernames and you have passwords already. But let's talk about some of the helpful practices I want to share with you today. Uh, The first one is commonsensical, but worth noting, is you don't want to share your personal data with anyone or any site that you're not familiar with. This is the same as if we weren't dealing with technology, but dealing with people that you might come in face-to-face contact with. It is good common sense, but with our increasing comfort with technology and doing business over the internet, I think sometimes that common sense could get pushed into the background and we could not use best practices. But you want to be aware of this at all times One of the things I wanted to mention about on this subject is Amazon, of course, is an incredibly successful company, Uh, and they have built up a massive market share, and they are a leader in the retail space. They have tremendous brand identity. Their stock has been very successful over these many years, and I think one of the reasons why they're successful doesn't get enough attention, and I think it's related to this sharing of personal data. I think that, at least for me as a consumer, I have a tremendous amount of safe, peaceful feelings when I'm dealing with Amazon. Uh, And that may be just perception, but it's powerful nonetheless. If I'm shopping and I'm looking for something and I see a variety of sites, in my mind, and I think a lot of people's minds, Amazon is the gold standard, that this is a site that I know and I can trust, and it's not just about price and ease of delivery and all of the other terrific features Amazon brings to the consumer, but I think also it's the safety factor, and I don't think it gets as much attention as it deserves. Uh, The second uh, helpful practice I want to share is to use strong passwords. You want to avoid easy stuff like your birthday and your kids' names. It's generally accepted that you want to use a a mix of upper and lowercase letters, and uh, you should combine that with the use of numbers and symbols. I do that uh, routinely. I think there are ways you could string together passwords that incorporate upper and lowercase numbers and symbols and still have it mean something or have there be a way that you could remember it fairly easy, but you want to use strong passwords. Uh, It's a basic, simple thing, but it is very effective. So use strong passwords. That's my suggestion. The third item is to avoid pop-ups 
and there's a way in your computer, and I do this on my computers, where pops up pop-ups will be suppressed automatically, so I don't even have to really deal with them. But you want to avoid pop-ups, avoid unfamiliar links, and avoid emails from unknown sellers. Fishers, uh, and it's not F-I-S-H-E-R-S, but rather P-H-I-S-H-E-R-S. Fishers are masqueraders. They masquerade as trustworthy sources to try and trick you into giving sensitive information. And so avoiding pop-ups, unfamiliar links, and emails from unknown senders is a great way to protect your information. Uh, be suspicious of activity, emails, texts, or even phone calls that ask you to disclose private information, personal information. I had a call recently from a financial institution. This was a personal matter for me, not pertaining to my business, and um, they wanted to verify information, they wanted me to verify information about me. So they called me up and say, well, we want to speak to you about your account, but we have to verify your identity. And that seems reasonable, but I did push back. I pushed back because I'm like, wait a second, you called me and you want me to verify my information, but that's exactly what a bad actor would do. I don't know who you are. You called me. I'm not going to give you any information. And what they did was is they gave me a number that I could call that institution. And that's what I did. I hung up with them. I called the number they gave me after verifying that it was a good number on the internet. It was actually a major bank. And I called and I spoke with them. I did not need to take that precaution in that instance, but I found it worrisome that a stranger called me and wanted to verify my information, but I had not verified them and I had not initiated anything with this institution. So that's a good example of a best practice I did. And even though I didn't need the protection, I'm glad that I took it because I wouldn't want to be violated. Uh, it's a good idea also to remember the old adage that if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Some of these fishing activities will have deals like go on a cruise for $199 or that you won some prize. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. So be careful responding to any overtures like that on the internet especially. So moving along, number four is keep your software up to date. I know for me, I could be guilty of not doing this because I'm not really a techie, uh, but you don't want to disregard those software updates because companies, they want to protect us as much as we want to be protected. Uh, and so they update their software and that update takes many, many different forms and serves lots of different purposes. But one of the very important purposes that they serve is they patch up security holes or breaches that might have been uncovered. And so by keeping your software up to date, you have the latest and best protections that that software provider has built into their platform. So update your software, be responsive when you get requests to update your software. Also, I will add that you should use antivirus software. Um, I do this both at the office as well as on my personal devices. It's a good practice to use reputable antivirus software. Next, number five, uh, in terms of your home Wi-Fi network, you want to keep that secure also. Uh, again, this is not an area that I am an expert on, but when you get a router, uh, you have a default name for that router and a default password for that router. Conventional wisdom says don't use the default name, change it to something uh, that you choose and also change the default password to something you use. And in this instance in particular, you want to make sure that you follow password best practices. What we talked about in uh, item number two, have a mix of upper and lower cases combined with numbers and symbols. Probably should be a little longer than maybe other passwords because 
it's not one that you're going to type into very often, but you want to keep your own Wi-Fi network secure. You do not want people that are driving by or neighbors being able to access your Wi-Fi network because that gives them a little bit of a nose under the tent, making it a little easier perhaps to access your private and sensitive information. So keep your personal Wi-Fi network secure. And the last point I want to make, number six, is to freeze your credit. And so this is a cybersecurity protection in the sense that if you go to the three major credit reporting agencies, they are Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, if you freeze your credit, it makes it extraordinarily difficult for anyone to open up accounts in your name so that even if uh, there was some violation and information ended up in the wrong hands, that they would not be able to use it uh, easily. It's quite difficult, in fact, to open up accounts in your name if your credit is frozen. Uh, we have done that in my family. It's been the case for a long time. So I think that, too, is a best practice I wanted to make available to you. So just to review, we talked about not sharing personal data with anyone or any site you're not familiar with. We talked about using strong passwords, avoiding pop-ups, unfamiliar links, and emails from unknown senders. Be careful of uh, fishers. Uh, we talked about keeping your software up to date and keeping your Wi-Fi network secure. I recommend freezing your credit, especially if you're not opening up new accounts, which we are not, new credit cards, loans, anything like that. Freeze your credit is a good best practice. What I wanted to leave you on is one just additional note, because the IRS is really a great way for bad people to get you to disclose personal information because most of us are very responsive if the IRS reaches out. Many of us have a little bit of a fear of what the IRS could do to us if we ran afoul of them. So that kind of authority can get us to make mistakes. So I want you to be very careful if you get an inquiry from the IRS it's important to know that the IRS does not initiate contact to anyone by email, they do not initiate contact by text, and they do not initiate contact through social media. So if you get a supposed inquiry from the IRS by email, by text, or through social media, your red flag should immediately be raised. Warning signs should go off in your head that this is very, very, very likely to be a bad actor. The IRS is never going to request information through any of those forums, so please know that. Again, I bring up the IRS because they have so much authority that sometimes we could get a little freaked out and that could cause us to do something that would be regrettable. Please don't find yourself in that position. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Even though I am not an expert on cybersecurity, I think these helpful best practices could be good basic safeguards for you to keep your information safe and secure. Thanks again. I'll be back with you on the next episode of the Simply Financial Podcast very soon. Please subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Thanks again. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of Sage Point Financial Incorporated and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can assure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Please note, the information being provided is strictly as a courtesy. When you link to any of the websites provided here, you are leaving this website. We make no representation as to the completeness or accuracy of the information provided at these websites, nor is the company liable for any direct or indirect technical or system issues or any consequences arising out of your access to your use of third-party technologies websites, information, and programs made available through this website. When you access one of these websites, you are leaving our website and assume total responsibility and risk for your use of the websites you are linking to. 
Securities and advisory services are offered through Sage Point Financial Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC, insurance services offered through Elliott Wealth Management, LLC, not affiliated with Sage Point.